Hello everyone, in this video let's attach this really neat tiny BMS to this lithium iron phosphate pack. Here we go. Hi, I'm David. Welcome to my channel where I like to work on DIY projects that are renewable energy and energy efficiency. This video is part two of working with this lithium iron phosphate pack. I'm calling this the milk crate project because I took a milk crate and inside I have 16 lithium iron phosphate cells. So these cells are now in here. I'll show you how I got to this stage with the leads coming out. I'm continuing the build on this lithium iron phosphate battery. It's about three kilowatt hours in a milk crate. I'm going to use a couple of things that I have on hand. This is a 30 amp DC breaker. Because it's 30 amp, I'll be using some 10 gauge wire. This is some silicone coated uh, fine strand wire, very flexible. But I don't have any more of these little fittings that can go on these fat posts. So I'm going to make my own. I already cut them to shape and they can go over the post. So I'm going to go ahead and solder this wire to this. And these are just going to get me up to the BMS or the contact or whatever else I need to get to. And I took these and I wire brushed them so they're nice and clean. The next thing I have to do is solder on these balance lead ends over here onto each battery. So I'm checking out this uh, manual. So it looks like the top is the most positive and the bottom is the most negative. And it actually says to start from the top. So if you have less than 16 cells, you don't go cell 1 through 7. You actually start up here. So start from top is printed on there. So that's slightly counterintuitive but it's easy enough to follow along for the positive most is at the very top. Plexiglass, it's one foot square so that it fits just inside here, at least it did. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Alright, so it fits down in there nicely. And I want these balance leads to come up and I want to be able to put this on here somewhere. If you're going to try drilling in the plexiglass, I made a terrible hole. I was using a spade bit. So try a different drill bit next time. <laughs> there we go. On the inside. There we are. Beautiful. Man, that looks so much sharper when you take that off. All right, let's get these through here. Now the only thing that I want to make sure of is that I don't have any wires sitting directly on top of the nuts being on here. Now I've been reading the manual and it says that in order to power the device itself I need to attach a battery positive and battery negative lead and according to the manual I can use as small as a 35 gauge wire. Now that's really really thin. So really just anything I have kicking around and I'm going to need to solder it to the battery positive, battery negative and then to this post. So there are little soldering pads here for B- minus and B- positive. Uh, I don't want to just solder on here and then solder onto the battery and have no way of disconnecting this. So I'm going to use a couple of XT60 connectors and one side will go on the battery and one side will go on the BMS. I have some 16 gauge wire that I'm going to use for this. First thing I'm doing is just getting some flux on all my wires.
Well, here's the tiny BMS, and over here in the corner is a B minus and a B positive. Those need to attach directly to the battery bank to receive power to the unit. So I made these two little connectors. These are XT60s, so they're little hobby connectors. And I think this side will go on the BMS, and then this one over here I think is a little bit more protected. That goes on the battery, but somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that. So I'll just strip these ends and put some solder on these. Now that the main power wires are soldered on, I'd like to take care of anything else that requires the soldering iron before I put it away. And these are the temperature sensors. Here's one of the little temperature sensors. Now that I've got the temperature sensors soldered on, on these connectors are the tiny little uh, metal pieces. And I'm going to use the tip of the probe and go down one at a time and checking that we have them in order. Now I will know if it's in order because it'll go up by 3.2 volts each time. 9.9, .9, 13, 16.6, one side, and I'll read to the next one. Next plug, we have 26, so we are in the correct order. Good. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to connect this tiny BMS. Now these, these XT60s would just uh, spark. The instructions actually say to connect this using a resistor first. Okay. So we're looking for the BMS to light up. I'm going to use this as my resistor. Um, so we're going to go ahead and... Okay, so we're charging, there we go. Yeah, so there's a tiny LED in there that's blinking right now. Yep. All right, so the next step, according to the manual, is to hook up the balance lead wires, starting with the bottom eight pin. So hopefully this works, and I don't blow anything up. Okay, and now the top, Next in the manual is to install the current sensor. It's odd because you got to kind of fish this in over a screw and over the B minus pad where you soldered that wire onto. There we go. All right, so here's the communication cable. This is what's supposed to go to a computer. So let's. Uh, Well, the good news is, this was a lot easier to hook up to the computer than I thought it would be. I thought I'd be at it for hours, if not days, trying to figure out the software. Uh, here's an isolator. The instructions said to use this. I didn't even know what it was. I had to phone a friend to find out that. So that's an extra part you have to buy separately, and then you need a cable to go to USB. Now, I just went to their website. Here's their website, and let me slide this over. On the website, it actually says download. So I just downloaded the Windows app, and it automatically worked. So I didn't have to, like, go click a whole bunch of things and find things. It just automatically popped up. Now that's awesome. So it's showing me all the cell voltages just right off the bat. I love that it shows it in kind of a simple graph format. Now it thinks the state of charge is 49%, pack voltage is 53.12, and pack current, it says 1 amp. Well, I'm not currently discharging anything, so that needs to be adjusted. Uh, unless this is uh, for the BMS itself. Now the onboard temperature sensor, that's built into the BMS, and then the two external ones are the ones I added. I just switched over to the safety tab. This is my first time going through it. It says over voltage cutoff of 3.9. Well, I think I'm going to change that to 3.7. I think is common for the over voltage cutoff. 2.9 is fine. I'll leave that there. There's a couple of options using these pins to switch on and off a relay. Now I have a couple of relays here. So this is out of an electric vehicle. 
And I actually have a lot of these because I take apart so many batteries. But this is a high voltage DC, so I can run the wire from the battery to one post, and it can switch on and off. Now it needs to switch on and off by applying a 12 volt to here. Uh, so this doesn't supply 12 volts. So I'll need a 48 volt to 12 volt converter. The manual shows a diode. I also need a relay because these pins are only good for up to 250 milliamp. And this coil is going to draw more than that. I think it's going to draw like 0.7 amps. So 750 milliamps. So it'll overpower this. So I'll have to get a little relay that this can power the relay to power this larger relay or contactor. <laughs> but I'll have to order all those parts, so it'll be in some future videos. Thank you everybody very much for watching. I think this is really awesome, and there's so many cool things that I can do with this. So go ahead and check them out. But I'll have to order a couple of more parts before I can actually demonstrate this in use. But I'm really excited that it was able to read the voltages and connect to the computer so easily. You know, that's a big thing for me. I'm not good with setting up the computer, but this was plug and play. So thanks for making it plug and play. And thanks everybody very much for checking out the video.